I have been authorized to announce that the schooner Dolphin, owned by James Marsden of this port, has not been reported for three months and is hereby declared lost at sea. Hey, I understand there's a million dollars in gold aboard the Dolphin, Mr. Galbraith. Yes, that's right. Pretty tough. Have a tremendous storm like that come up and the ship is just four days out? Sure, but the Dolphin's weathered a lot worse storms. It's an odd coincidence that as soon as she gets a million dollars worth of gold bullion aboard her, she disappears. Now, wait a minute, Lawson. Don't start talking like that. You know as well as I do that Jim Marsden is as honest as daylight. Of course, he has his little financial difficulties, but every creditor of his will get every cent that's coming to them. Why, he still has his other ship, the Wahari. Perhaps not for long. Vorey sold some of Marsden's overdue notes, and he likes to be paid on the line. Yeah, I know all about Vorey's. He'd sooner see a man bankrupt than to see him get a chance to make good. Well, here's Captain Morrison now. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Well, thanks. I'm a little busy right now. Tommy here does all my drinking. Fine. What do you have, Tommy? Mr. Galbraith? How are you? I'm fine, Jim. Fine. Hiya, Lawson. Hi. I'm awfully sorry, old man. Anything I can do? Well, I'm taking the Wahari out again with the next tide. I'd like to put a few stores aboard if it can be arranged. Why, anything you want, Jim, at your own terms. You better see Voyage before you sail, Captain Marsden. About your notes. Well, I'm a little pressed for time. Well, you're his agent. You can tell him you'll get every cent I owe him as soon as I make a few more trading runs. Nothing doing. You tell him yourself. Mr. Down over here, I'll give you a list of my supplies. Voorhees residence. Hello. Yes, this is Voorhees. Lawson. Marsden's in port and means to sail again with the next tide. He won't sail. I saw the Wahari when she dropped anchor. And I've had the port officers attach her for the money Marsden knows me. Got plenty of seal cloth? Yes, lots. I think that'll just about take care of everything. Oh, uh, Jim. Oh, by the way, Jim, I was thinking, it's going to take you a long time to recoup your losses with just one ship. I have a proposition. Why don't you get someone to sail your schooner and you take over the management of my trading post down at Pulamati Island? Pulamati, Pulamati. Well, that's where the strange stories about Haunted Harbor come from, isn't it? About demons, deep sea monsters, and lost men. There's something strange going on down there, Jim. Why, the natives are scared crazy. Why, they won't even work the copra. Well, there must be something strange behind it. Yes, but we can't find what it is. I can't even keep a manager. Now, that's where you would come in. You could go down there, buckle into that situation, where you could ferret out the mystery and get things going again. Thanks, John. I might take a crack at it later, but right now I'd like to make a couple more runs and square my debts. Well, if that's the way you want it, Jim. But remember, that job is yours whenever you want it. I won't forget. Thanks. I get this stuff to you now. Good. Come on, Tommy. We've got a lot of work to do. Huh. I told you you better settle with Voorhees. What are you driving at? Hey, Jim! Oh, Skipper! Boys just had the ship attached, put the whole crew ashore. I should have expected that from him. You can't blame him for thinking it's all pretty fishy. What do you mean? It looks pretty convenient for a dead broke Skipper to have his ship disappear with the consignment of gold bullion aboard. Lawson, you and I are not going to get along. I don't like you either. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
First class job of overhauling, Chief. Come on, Jim, let's see about getting the ship released. Voyage is the only man who can do anything about that. And I'm going to see that he does. Our operations at Haunted Harbor seem to be going quite well, Mr. Carter. Forget Mr. Carter. The name is Kane. I'd like that understood. I understand perfectly. Mr. Carter's record wouldn't stand too close an investigation. Never mind my record. Just sign this receipt for the return of your money. With interest. Oh, no. That won't do. I've decided to take a 50-50 share in your project. You're crazy. You can't gouge me like you do these fool sailors. The whole scheme was mine. All you did was put up the money at 10%. And all I have to do now is have you arrested. I don't need you to run things. And I don't need you any longer. said I'd find you here, Captain Marsden. Lawson? Yes, I got here just a minute ago. You made good use of that minute. Mr. Voorhees is quite dead. Now, wait a minute. I didn't kill him. I found him lying here when I came in. He was trying to tell me something when he died. You're under arrest for murder, Captain. I'd advise you to save your story for your trial. Marsden to hang today. Captain James Marsden, well-known spawn to the gallows at high noon for the murder of Frederick Voorhees. The colonial governor has refused Marsden's plea for a stay of execution to permit further search for Carter, the mysterious man who Marsden claims is the real killer. Well, they're hanging an innocent man. There won't be any hanging if you'll help us free Jim. How can I? You know I'd do anything in the world to save Jim Marsden's life. But it wouldn't help him to have myself thrown into jail. Listen, Tommy can handle the jailbreak all right. But we want a ship with a getaway. Yeah, I have a schooner out there in the bay. Nobody aboard her. But listen. I'm a law-abiding man. I'll have nothing to do with jailbreaks. But if somebody was to steal my boat, I wouldn't help it. You're a prince, Mr. Galbraith. And if that boat sails to Pulamati, that manager's job at my trading post is still open. Good enough. I'll tell Tommy to get to work.
Say, do you know anything about these contraptions? Not much. Perhaps the carburetor. Sorry, I had to do it. No use, Marsden. I mean to live as long as I can. All right. We'll have to come and get you. Give me a hand. treaty port and they can't extradite me. I'd like to see Lawson's face when he hears you got away. So would I. I believe you're guilty of compounding a felony. You helped Marsden escape from jail and gave him your ship to get away in. It's not my fault my schooner was stolen. The harbor should have been better policed. Storm warning. A hurricane is coming in from the southwest. No ship is to leave this port. All wireless equipped vessels have been warned to seek shelter. Only three men to man that schooner in a hurricane. Well, that'll save the state a hanging job. <laughs>
try to save him. We can't get a boat over in this sea. Then we'll drop anchor and rig a breaches, boy. I'll take him alive. You're crazy. We might as well have left you to hang.
more time. All right, take her away. In the murder of Voorhees on me, I managed to escape from a moho just in time. My name won't be cleared until I get the real murderer, a man named Carter. Have you any idea where you could find him? Well, I'm convinced from what Voorhees said that he's somewhere on Pool Monte. That's why I took the job of running Galway's trading post there. Well, I'm looking for Carter on the native spring in the Cobra. I'm afraid that won't be easy. The coconut plantations are close to Haunted Harbor, and the natives are afraid to go near it. How did you know that? I've been in Pulamati often. You see, my father has been doctoring the natives on those islands a long time. Naturally, since the sloop was my only home, I went along. You lived aboard the sloop? Yes. I wonder if you'd help me. Why, certainly, after all you've done for us. Well, I was thinking, as long as you're so well acquainted with the natives, why not stay over at Pulamati a while and help me persuade them to gather a copra again? Besides, your father will need plenty of rest and quiet until he recovers and, well, well, there's plenty of room in the company bungalow for all of us. Uh, what do you say? It's a deal. Oh, fine. Uh, well, I'll radio the clerk and tell him to have the bungalow ready for us. Uh, would you take the wheel? Certainly. These are an extra set of keys to the store. And uh, this contains a combination of the office safe. I also have the accounts and inventories ready for your inspection. Thank you, Dranger. I trust you found everything here to your satisfaction, Captain Marston. I'd like to stay on as your assistant. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to have you. Oh, by the way, Dranger, I want to ask you, uh, what do you know about Haunted Harbor? Nothing personally. But there is something terrible down there. Of all the natives who went there, only one has ever returned. And he came back a raving maniac babbling of demons and sea monsters. There must be some natural explanation for that. Perhaps. But the natives won't go near the place to get copra. As a result, our trade with them has dropped to nothing. <laughs> Looks as though it's up to me to go to Haunted Harbor and solve the mystery. Don't try it, Captain. You'll never come back. How's your father, Patricia? He's resting comfortably. Oh, that's fine. Dranga, I'll be down at the store tonight at 8 o'clock to check the inventories. 
I'll have everything ready, Captain. Good day. Good day. And the new company manager is Jim Marsden. Marsden? What's he doing here? Maybe he came here to find the man who killed Voorhees. Can't connect me with it. No one saw me at Amor. Kane, did Mars never know you? I mean, when your name was Carter? No. But he's a tough opponent, and with him on the island, our whole setup is in danger. Yes. He's already asking questions about Haunted Harbor. He even plans to go there. And the sooner we take care of him, the better. He's coming to the store tonight to check the inventories. That's good enough. I'll send a man to do the job, and we'll fix it so you won't be suspected. I was working on the invoices. Fred. Take it easy. I'll get you the bungalow. I'll have Miss Harding take care of that. We'll come back here in the morning and straighten things up. Come on. talking to the chief about getting his people back to work in the copra plantations. Good. What did he say? The plantations are too close to Haunted Harbor. The natives are afraid to go near them. Did you arrange an interview for me to see the chief? No. He won't allow you in the village, but he's sending his son, Cassin, to meet you at Koala Pass. He will take your message to his father. Well, I guess that'll be some help. What time am I to meet him? This afternoon at 3 o'clock. Now, just give us time to have lunch. I'll be back after I see Castle. All right. DX calling X2. DX calling X2. DX calling X2. This is X2. Come in, D. The Harding girl arranged for Marsden to meet Cassim in Kuala Pass at 3 o'clock today. 
We'll take care of it. That's bad. Marsden may make a deal with Cassim. He won't have a chance. I don't get it. Well, it's simple. Knock off Cassim before he gets to the pass. Then the natives will think Marsden murdered their chief's son. Pretty neat. Sure. Take Snell and get out to the pass. Right. Let's take him to the bungalow. Get going, I'll hold him back. country and stop that car.
wounded. Let's take him to the bungalow. Get going. I'll hold him back. Cross country and stop that car. Why did they attack Castle? We don't know. He was unconscious when we got him back to the village. The chief was grateful to Jim for saving his son's life, but he refuses to ask the natives to work on the plantations. Is Marsden still at the village? No, we went from the village to Kane's mine to see if we could find out anything about Haunted Harbor. And he wants you to meet him there and bring a couple of extra boxes of ammunition. What does he expect to shoot? Perhaps the demons of Haunted Harbor. Or maybe Carter. The guy that done the killing they tried to hang Jim for. Oh, on my way, I'll drop you off at the bungalow. This is X2. Marsden's on his way to see you. He intends to investigate Haunted Harbor at once. Why is he coming here? Perhaps he wants to check up on you and your men. Don't forget, he's convinced that Voorhees' murderer is on this island. All right, we'll take care of him. You think that Marsden suspects it's your Carter? I think not, but he's dangerous and must be eliminated. Set the trap in the mine tunnel. When Marsden arrives, I'll manage to send him down there. And don't come back here. Join Greg at the cabin in Dark Canyon. Marsden, manager of Galbraith's trading post. Oh, yes. Glad to know you, Marsden. I've been intending to come over to the store and see you. I understand your company is having difficulty getting native labor for the Copra. Well, that's what I wanted to see you about. The native chief tells me that the harbor adjoining the coconut plantation is haunted by demons, sea serpents, and monsters. You ever hear about it? Yes, I have. However, I have never seen any of these monsters. But there is something strange going on beneath those waters, something dangerous. Men who've worked for me have gone there and never returned. 
Well, have you any explanation for it? That is, any natural explanation? Frankly, I haven't. I'd tell my people to stay away from Haunted Harbor, and that would be my advice to you. Oh, I can't do that. I've got to have native labor. The only way I can get it is to find out what's back of this whole business. I'm going to have a look at that Haunted Harbor with one of my men who's due here any minute. Oh, I meant to ask you, Kane. Uh, did you ever hear of a man named Carter here on Pulamate? Carter? No, I don't think so. Uh, why not ask some of the men in the mine? They might know. I'd go with you, but I have to finish this assay. Oh, I can find my way. When a man arrives, will you send him down there? Certainly. Thank you, Kane. Not at all. See you later. Uh, we got a job to do. Marsden's coming here. He's going to meet with an accident. How soon do you expect him? I don't know. You wait down the tunnel by the signal switch. If he asks you any questions, tell him you're new here. And other men in the mine will talk to him. OK. I'll stay here by the ore dump. Give me one light when Marsden comes in, and two when he starts under the dump. for a man named Carter. Mr. Kane thought maybe one of you men might know him. Never heard of him. We're new on this job. There's some more men working down that way. They might know him. Thanks. See if we finish. He's still alive, Jim. Oh, Jim. Jim. How did it happen? I don't know. The ore chute up there must have give way. Come on, help me get him out of here. I gotta get him with Kane's office. That old ore dump should have been repaired long ago. I'm terribly sorry, Marsden. Oh, forget it. Nobody's to blame. Can I send you to town in my car? Oh, Yank brought a car. I've got to get started to Haunted Harbor. You better rest up a bit before you try that. The road only goes part way, and it's a long, hard climb from there on. We'll make it. Well, if you insist, good luck, Marsden. Thanks. X2 calling DC. X2 calling DC. Come in, X2. Marsden and his pal escaped the trap. They're on the way to Haunted Harbor. Snell said he was killed. Never mind what he said. Listen to me. They're in a car and they'll have to go to the cliff road. Have Snell get some men and stop them.
rocks. Keep shooting. I'm going to try to get around behind him. shooting yank. The other one went this way. There he goes up the cliff. Back from the edge, I'm going up.
keep shooting. I'm going to try to get around behind him. shooting yank the other one went this way keep back from the edge I'm going up Jim? Yeah. Not sure no way to get up that cliff now. Someone's mighty anxious to keep us from getting to Haunted Harbor. We'll get there, one way or the other. There's something about all this I can't fathom. You were attacked our first night on the island. The native chief's son was attacked on his way to confer with us about the copra situation. Yeah, it looks as though someone doesn't want me to get the copra business going. Perhaps a rival trading company has men working undercover. Mm, well, that's possible. That doesn't explain the mysterious terror of Haunted Harbor, or why someone's so determined to keep me from reaching there. Then that means you'll be in danger every time you try to reach the harbor. I suppose so. But I've got a job to do, and I can't let Galbraith down. If it weren't for him, I'd have been hanged for a murder I didn't commit. Have you found any trace of the man, Carter, who did the killing? No, and I haven't any idea what he looks like. If I am convinced, he's somewhere on this island. Well, I've got to get out to Point Neptune and overhaul that company motorboat before we make the trip to Haunted Harbor. Uh, would you care to come along? No, thanks. I'm going to pick up some medicine supplies from the store and take them out to the native village. It might sort of help along our good neighbor policy. <laughs> well, we need some good neighbors. We seem to have plenty of bad ones on this island. It's unfortunate the fall didn't kill Marsden. Well, anyhow, we stopped him from getting through to Haunted Harbor. Marsden won't give up. He's probably making other plans right now. The sooner we can find out what those plans are, the sooner we can spike them. I think I'll have a little talk with Marsden and see what information I can pick up. I expected to find Captain Marsden here. I see. My name is Kane. I operate a gold mine on the island. Oh, yes. I've heard Captain Marsden speak of you. I'm sorry he isn't here. My name is Hardy. Dr. Hardy? Yes. I've heard many fine things about your medical work among the natives here and on other islands. Thank you. I've had a very interesting life traveling about, meeting people. Have you ever been in a moor? Not recently, Doctor. Why? Your face is very familiar. I have a feeling that you've been one of my patients somewhere. Oh, I'm afraid you must be mistaken, Doctor. I'd have remembered you had we met. Could it have been Singapore? No. Ceylon? No. Shanghai? No, I've never been in any of those places. 
Well, I must be going, Doctor. I'll see you, Marsden, some other time. So I'll tell the captain that you were here. If you will, please. through his casebook and identified you as Carter, a wounded convict he treated in Shanghai. So that's where he saw me. Are you the only one he's talked to? Yes. Marsden and his pals are at Point Neptune. The girl has gone to the native village. Hardy wants me to drive after We've her We've got to silence him. That won't be hard. I mustn't be around here when it happens. Go to the native village and give the girl her father's message. Tell her about Carter? Certainly not. Just say that he phoned for her to return at once. Meantime, I'll radio Greg and have him take care of the doctor before she gets back here. I get it. I need. Father! It's unfortunate that you walked in on this. You'll have to come along with me in case I run into any trouble. You're driving me to Dark Canyon. Get out that door. Radio headquarters. Greg, calling X2. Calling X2. Come in, Greg. I took care of everything, but the Harding girl returned before I could get away, so I had to bring her to the cabin. You'll have to get rid of her. We can't turn her loose. Of course not. I said get rid of her. All right. Get your hands up. Both of you.
Get to the car! Stop for it. We can't overtake them. We'll block the road below. Give me a hand.
shop for it. We can't overtake them. We'll block the road below. Give me a hand. for the girl? Dr. Harding told him. Harding? Then he may have told him about me. No, he tried to. He said, I saw Carter. And then he passed out before he could reveal that you were Carter. <laughs> then we have nothing to worry about on that score. Now we can concentrate on blocking Marsden's plans to visit Haunted Harbor. I'm depending on you to keep me informed. I think he's planning to go by water. Thinking isn't good enough. I want to know definitely. Then I'll drop in at his bungalow and offer my condolences on the old man's death. Her father's death must have been a terrible blow to Miss Harding. Naturally. She's borne up under it very bravely. She has plenty of courage. I wonder what's to become of her now that she's alone in the world. I suppose she'll want to go back to the States. There's a ship to win in a few days, and I'll book her passage. No, Jim. I intend to stay on this island. But, Patricia... You came here to find Carter so that you could clear your name. Now, I want to find him, too, because we know that he's responsible for my father's death. Please, Jim, let me see this thing through. All right. We work it out together. It'll mean getting through to Haunted Harbor in spite of everything Carter's men do to stop us. I must warn you again, Captain. No one has ever gone there and lived to tell of it. All the more reason to find out what's back of this whole thing. We'll start as soon as I finish work on the motorboat at Point Neptune. I want that automatic rifle at the store. Get the rifle, then pick up Miss Hardy on the way back. Both of you meet me at the point. All right, sir. Marsden's working on the motorboat at Point Neptune. He's going directly from there to Haunted Harbor. I'm taking an automatic rifle out to him. An automatic rifle? We don't want him armed like that. Put dummy bullets in the rifle and take your time about getting there, understand? Right. Meantime, I'll send Greg and Snell to keep Marsden from ever getting started. Drop those guns.
made too much noise coming through that brush. I'm not used to driving with a rifle at my explosives out of my saddlebag and we'll finish this job. Got here just in time. The boat's all ready. We shall go off for Haunted Harbor right away. Good. Here's your rifle, Captain. Aren't you going with us, Dragner? Oh, no, thank you. I've seen men start for there, but I've never seen any of them return. However, I wish you luck. Oh, here's some extra cartridges. You'll need them. Thanks. to point Neptune before we finish. I know. Dranga radioed me a full report. Mars and the girl have already left the point. Headed for Haunted Harbor? Yes. He's bought himself a one-way passage. When we round the next point, we'll be entering Haunted Harbor. Now that we're nearing it, I'm getting sort of a queer feeling. A kind of premonition of evil. <laughs> You're thinking about all those stories you've heard. Don't let it get you.
There's the harbor. Get ahead. Around the next point, we'll be entering Haunted Harbor. Now that we're nearing it, I'm getting sort of a queer feeling, a kind of premonition of evil. <laughs> Harbor certainly seems quiet and peaceful enough. Yeah. 
to be alive, Captain Marsden. Remember, I warned you of the dangers of Haunted Harbor. <laughs> no wonder the natives are afraid to go near the place. Weird sea serpents rising from the water. You know, there is something strange going on beneath those waters. I still mean to find out what it is. Don't force your luck, Captain. Jim, what can you do against creatures that live at the bottom of the sea? I can go down there and look for them. I've got a complete diving outfit aboard the schooner. That's a good idea. I'll go to the ship and get the stuff for you. You wouldn't know where to find it. The cases are stored in the hold. But you can roll me out there tonight and help me unload the equipment. I'll be ready. Good. Jim, do you think you should risk diving in the harbor? I've got to. The natives won't work the copra as long as this danger threatens. My job is to produce copra. Once I get the business going, I can concentrate on finding Carter. Diving apparatus? We've got to stop that. It might expose everything. And put a nice tight noose around your neck. Never mind that. If I'm exposed, we'll all hang together. You've got to take care of Margin when you get him aboard the ship. I can't do a job like that alone. All right, all right. I'll send Dunning to help you. He'll swim out as soon as he sees you and Marsden board the schooner. Down in the hole. You can get him as he comes out on the deck. Throw that helmet overboard. Don't let it splash.
Thanks, Dranger. It's too bad you killed him. We might have questioned him. How'd he come aboard? I, I don't know, Captain. He sneaked up and struck me from behind. Then as I lay half stunned, he threw the diving helmet overboard. Oh, so that's why he was sent here. To prevent my diving expedition to Haunted Harbor. It looks that way. Oh, I'm not beaten yet. I'll get another diving outfit and a mower. You can't do that. If you're seen at a mower, you'll be arrested on that old murder charge. I don't intend to be seen. I can use the company plane and be there shortly after daylight tomorrow morning. I'll take Miss Harding along with me. She can contact Galbraith while I keep undercover. You think of everything, Captain. It must be very discouraging to the men who are trying to destroy you. Yeah. Marsden took the knife away from Dunning and killed him with it. Where's Marsden now? He and the Harding girl are flying to Amoa. That plays right into our hands. All we have to do is notify the police at Amoa. There's a price on Marsden's Don't head. Don't be a fool. If he's arrested again, it'll throw the whole case wide open. We don't know how much he's learned about the secret of Haunted Harbor. We've got to dispose of him before the police catch him. But he's on his way. What can you do? I'll radio Lawson at Amoa and have him trap Marsden before he can contact Galbraith. Keep all appointments at the ship's Bell Cafe, Galbraith. You certainly can't go there. I'll get Mr. Galbraith. All right. Have him meet me out back at the cafe. Yet, miss. Who do you want to see? Mr. Galbraith. Yeah, he's here. In the office. Come in. I expected to find Mr. Galbraith here, Mr. Lawson. What is the meaning of this? Don't cause any trouble, Miss Harding, and you won't be hurt. Sit down. What do you mean? You came to a mall with Captain Jim Marston. Where is he? I wouldn't tell you if I knew. Oh, I think you will. You see, Marsden's wanted for murder, and it's your duty to help find him. You understand anyone protecting a murderer becomes equally guilty under the law. Marsden isn't a murderer, and you're not the law. Call in the police if you dare, and I'll name the real murderer. The only talking you'll do will be to me. Perhaps this little device will help persuade you. One of your hands in there, you might be glad to tell me where Marsden's hiding. Bring her over here. She's out cold. Get some water. Get back. There we are.
over here. She's out cold. on in here. I heard shots. Jim Marsden was here. He killed Neville and then ran out the back way. There's a $5,000 reward for him, dead or alive. You shouldn't have told him about Marsden. We don't want the police to get him. If he tells him enough about Haunted Harbor to cause an investigation, they'll find out that Kane is really Carter. They'll never catch Marsden. He had too good a start. A friend of mine lives in here, a tobacco peddler named Tayola. I think he'll hide us until tonight. Good. So that's why we're here. I need your help, Tayola. You do not have to ask for that. Good. We'll stay here until tonight. And I've got to go to town to see Galbraith by getting some diving equipment. By now, the police will know you're here to see him. They'll watch his every move. It's too dangerous. I think not. If Taylor will fix me up in one of his outfits and let me take your peddling route tonight, what do you say? I say you can do it. But first, you must take lessons. I will teach you. Fine. Watch closely. The back go. Cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes. No, they. Tobacco, cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes, Mr. Galbraith. No. These are a special blend to one. No. you to solve the mystery of Haunted Harbor and prove my innocence.
Have they got Marsden yet? No, but he can't escape. Everybody's out after that $5,000 reward. My own men are watching Galbraith's house and office. I told you not to let that peddler in here. Throw him out. There's no diving equipment in town. I'll order someone to ship it to you. Here's the bartender. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Twan. I told you to stay out of here. Jim Worth! <laughs> I thought he was Teola. Yeah, he had me fooled, too. That's Teola's headdress. And Trey. That means they're working together. Then Marsden and the girl must be hiding in Teola's cave. Right. Send some men out there at once. Wait a minute. There's a five thousand dollar reward for Marsden, dead or alive. I'll send the men out there. You notify the police that Marsden's hiding in Teola's cave. When they get there, they'll find him dead, and we can claim the reward. I get it. The fact that they recognize me puts you in a bad spot. Don't worry about me. Now, there is something to worry about. When they figure out that you helped me, it may mean a long prison term for you. You've got to get away from here. Here, take this. With this, I can return to my native island, a rich man. I am grateful. Well, I'm grateful to you too, Teola. I must pack a few things before I leave. We better start from the plane. You ain't going anywhere. Go ahead, start something, Marsden. When the police get here, they'll find you dead anyway. We'll collect the reward. Yes, I'm all right. We better leave here before the police get here. You better come with us, Teola. No, Tuan. I can still gather my things and get away in time. Well, so long. Again, many thanks. Goodbye, Teola. Farewell.
close. Too close for comfort. You better let the boys know we're on the way back. Our radio drank it to tell them. And they expect to land at Durian Flats about 8 o'clock in the morning. Marsden said to tell Yank and Tommy to meet him with a station wagon. But you didn't tell them. I had to. They came in just as he was signing off. But I told them he said to meet him at 9 o'clock. That'll give us time to prepare a little welcome for Captain Marsden. Craig, you and Snell will go to Durian Flats first thing in the morning. Well, only one more charge to plant, and then we're ready for Marsden. in the right places. Well, it's a cinch march this train can't miss all of them. Hurry up, he's overdue. We're a little late, aren't we? Well, this headwind has slowed us down a bit. to land at Durian Flats about 8 o'clock in the morning. Marsden said to tell Yank and Tommy to meet him with a station wagon. But you didn't tell them. I had to. They came in just as he was signing off. But I told them he said to meet him at 9 o'clock. That'll give us time to prepare a little welcome for Captain Marsden. Craig, you and Snell will go to Durian Flats first thing in the morning. I hope we got them planted in the right places. Well, it's a cinch march. This plane can't miss all of them. Hurry up, he's overdue. We're a little late, aren't we? 
Oh, this headwind has slowed us down a bit. It's landing at that end. set those mines knew in advance that your plane was going to land there. And who knew that besides ourselves? Only Dranga. Right. He got the message that my plane was due in at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? But he told us 9 o'clock. An hour's difference. That hour gave Carter's men time to set the landmines. Looks as though Dranga's been selling us out. That explains why Carter's always just one jump ahead of us. He's over at the store. Let's go over there and get him right now. Wait a minute, Yank. It isn't Dranga we want. It's Carter. Carter's the man whose crime I'm accused of. And he's the one who's behind this reign of terror on the island. You mean we might make Dranga lead us to Carter? Yes, but only if he doesn't know we suspect him. If it's inside information he wants, I might give him some. Hello, Captain. I hope your trip to a mall was successful. Well, not altogether. I couldn't get all the diving equipment I needed. But I did get something very important. You know how I've been looking for a man named Carter? Yeah. Well, this holds the answer. Albright gave it to me when I was in Amoa. This contains Carter's criminal record and his fingerprints. Is that all? No picture of him? Well, all I need is the fingerprints if he's on the island. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, everyone in Pulamati buys the supplies in this store. And whatever they handle leaves a fingerprint. We'll check them and get our man. A clever plan. Very clever. I'll bring your fingerprint kit over this afternoon. If you want me, I'll be in the bungalow. Right. DX to X2. DX calling X2. Come in, X2. Come in, DX. This is Greg. The boss is out at the cabin in Dark Canyon. Anything important? Plenty. Marsden's got hold of Carter's criminal record and fingerprints in a moor. He's planning to check them against everyone on the island. If he does that, we're all finished. We've got to get those records. They're right here in the safe. Get them and take them to the boss right away. Right. Dranga swallowed the bait. He radioed Greg and was told to take the records to a cabin in Dark Canyon. The boss is out there. The boss? Well, that must be Carter. Where's Dranga now? Here on the floor, out cold. Good, tie him up and keep him there. I'll follow through on this. Carter's out in Dark Canyon and that's where I'm riding. You two go to the store and see if Dranga will talk now that we caught him red-handed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
DX, calling X2. Come in, X2. Urgent. Come in, DX. Listen, that fingerprint evidence was faked up to trap me. They were listening when I called you. And Marsden's on his way to Dark Canyon right now. We've got to warn the boss. But there's no radio at the cabin. Take the company plane and fly out there. It's our only chance. Right. What happened? Where's Dranga? He got away. He's probably gone to warn Carter. Then Jim's going to need help. Let's get started. Wait. Where will I get my gun? Take the company plane. You can make it quicker. OK. Dranga's horse, all right. Well, it's a cinch he's heading for Dark Canyon. Come on. Marsden, he mustn't see me here. Get back to the table. Where's Carter? I wonder if he came alone. I'm going to find out. I don't think so. Did you finish him? Not quite, but I will now. That's Barson's plane. His men are coming to help him. When it lands, we'll pick him off. Get to cover. Oh. 
See me here? Get back to the table. Where's Carter? I wonder if he came alone. I'm going to find out. with Marsden? I don't think so. Did you finish him? Not quite, but I will now. That's Marsden's plane. His men are come to help him. When it lands, we'll pick him off. Get to cover. Stymied. Dranga has been tipping Carter off to every move we've made. If Dranga knew Carter, then he must have known all about Haunted Harbor, too. 
Yeah. If Dranger were still alive, we could force him to tell us what we want to know. I think you've got something there, Yank. We know Dranger's dead, but Carter doesn't. But what good will that do us, Skipper? Perhaps we can bring Carter out into the open. Now look, we'll pass the word along that Dranger's still alive. And as soon as he regains consciousness, we're going to force him to squeal on his pals. That ought to put the next move up to Carter. What'd you find out? Well, the man I sent to the store reported that Dranker was not killed in that crash. He's badly burned and still unconscious. And Marsden's holding him prisoner. What are they going to do with him? I couldn't find out. But Dranker knows you're Carter. And Marsden may force him to talk. We can't take a chance on that. We've got to get Dranker away from them. Yeah, but we don't even know where he is. We'll force Marsden to turn him over to us. Can you get a native to carry a message? Yeah. Tongue will do it. Good. Send him to the Marsden bungalow. Have him tell the Harding girl that the chief's son is sick at the native village and needs her help. She's bound to fall for it, and you can pick her up on the way. Here she comes. She swallowed Tonga's story, all right. Taker, I'm going to see Marsden. 18 salt. 18 salts. Take it easy, boys. I'm here on business. Take his gun, Yang. Well, what do you want? We want Dranga. How about a deal? Nothing doing, Greg. Better listen to reason. We've got the Harding girl. We tricked her into going out to see a sick native and grabbed her on the way to the village. That's a lie. No, it isn't. Trisha informed me this morning that she was going out to see the chief's son. I suppose you're interested in seeing her alive again. I ought to tear your head off. Hold up, Yank. We better listen to him. What's your deal, Greg? Turn Drang over to us and we'll return the girl. All right. Drang is in pretty bad shape. But we'll deliver him wherever you say. Bring him to the big rocks tonight. And no tricks. 
Oh, I'll take my gun. Angus dead. We can't deliver him. What do we do, Jim? Just like I told Greg. We'll go to the big rocks tonight and deliver Dranga to Carter's men. What about Dranga? Everything's set for us to pick him up at the big rocks. How about the air drill? It's all ready. We'll try it out, see if the bit's loose enough. Tired of the post. Now you know what'll happen to you if Marsden tries to double cross us. All set? Everything's ready. We'll head for the big rocks and pick up Dranga. Get out. How is he? Pretty bad shape. He's still unconscious. Don't try to follow us. Hey, what about the Harding girl? As soon as we get dragged into a safe place, we'll turn her loose. Get rid of her now. Hold it! Throw your guns away. You gone crazy, Dranga? Throw them away. Marston!
What about the girl in there? You're not gonna turn her loose. Of course not. Get rid of her now. Hold it. Throw your guns away. Have you gone crazy, Dranga? Throw them away. Marston! <laughs> Another way out of this place? Down that passage. Come on. Got some news. Just came from the trading company's store. I left some gold bars there to be shipped out by Marston. Did you find out what he plans to do with Dranga? I found out that Dranga is dead. He was killed instantly when that plane crashed. Then Marsden pulled a fast one on us. Yes, he's nobody's fool. He lost a valuable man. Yeah. Now we've got no way of getting information about Marsden's plans. There's a way to manage that. We'll plant this wireless dictaphone in Marsden's bungalow. Snell, you know how it works. Set it to our wavelength. Watch outside the Mars and bungalow until you're sure the coast is clear. We don't want any slip-ups. village, a present from the chief. Shall I keep it for a pet? All right, if you think you share the fruit with us. <laughs> well, the chief must be softening up. Yes, he's willing to confer with you. I didn't tell him you were trying to get permission for outside workers to enter the coconut plantation. Well, I think I can sell him the idea. Once I get the men in there, the natives might lose their fear of Haunted Harbor. We're to be at the chief's village tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. You know, it might be well to bring him a present. Mm, I've got a portable radio at the store. I'll take that along. That's a splendid idea. Good. There must be some way to stop this conference without showing our hand. There is a way. That portable radio he's going to give the chief. If that radio caused the chief's death, what would happen to Marsden? Well, he'd be out of our way forever. All right, we'll arrange it. I'll send some men tonight to install a special attachment in that radio while Mars and the others are at the bungalow. When is the next boat due, Jim? Three days, but I have some valuable cargo for her. Kane gave me $50,000 worth of gold bars to ship. 50,000? That's a lot of gold. That's a lot more than I want to keep in that safe in the store. <laughs> hey! <laughs> that monkey.
dog, he's got worse manners than an ape. <laughs> Blooming monkey. You're clumsier than the monkey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look at this. What is it? It's a wireless dictaphone. Carter's men again. I wonder what they could be after this time. Whoever was listening must have heard what we said about the gold in your safe. That's it. Yank, you and Tommy go to the store and bring the gold here. We'll keep it under guard until it's shipped. On the double. Greg really thought of something when he hooked up this rocket oscillator. Just how does it work? It hooks onto the radio tubes. When the radio is turned on and the tubes are hot enough, the heat is transmitted to this oscillator and the firing pin will do the rest. A nice present for the chief. We got here just in time. Open the safe while I phone Jim. Hello? Well, good work, Yank. Yeah, Patricia was right. They were after the gold. Well, they didn't get it. We'll bring it up there right away. Good. And bring that portable radio along. I'm going to take it to the native village tomorrow. Right, Chief. I'm sorry, Captain Marston. I cannot allow other workers to enter our plantations. It could be surrendering the rights it has taken my people years to establish. Well, then why not let your men return to work under my protection? They would never go so near to the sea demons in Haunted Harbor. If we drive out these so-called demons, will you reconsider your decision? I'm afraid you speak the impossible. What if it proves to be possible? In that case, we shall confer once again. Oh, I wish to thank you once again for the gift you have brought me. You're quite welcome, Chief. Let me show you how it operates. You turn on this switch. 
magic box brought by the captain. magic box very pleased but it isn't magic it's purely mechanical based on the harnessing of sound waves I do not understand I only fear that it is magic that it invokes evil forces oh there's nothing evil about it nothing more about this than you do. You brought the devil box here to slay our chief. Devil box! Death! Death! Please, please, you must listen. Your words are useless. This guilt is crying. Our tribal law decreased the punishment. Death by fire. No. Prepare no. the funeral pyre.
wish to thank you once again for the gift you have brought me. Now you're quite welcome, Chief. Let me show you how it operates. You turn on this switch. Pleased with the magic box? Very pleased. But it isn't magic. It's purely mechanical, based on the harnessing of sound waves. What caused it? Seize him. He has murdered our chief. Wait, I know nothing more about this than you do. You brought the devil box here to slay our chief. Devil box! Death! Your words are useless. His guilt is plain. Our tribal law decrees the punishment. Death by fire. No. no. Prepare the funeral pyre. Tanaka, Luca. Get back there. Back up. It's obvious that some sort of a bomb was concealed in the radio we gave the native chief. The only way to make peace with the natives is to bring them definite proof of my innocence. What proof? Mm -hmm. a confession by one of the men in Carter's outfit. <laughs> What's funny about that? <laughs> You're balmy, Skipper. You ain't got no prisoner. You don't even know where to look for one. That's right, Tommy. But a smart trick might draw one of them into our hands. Marsden's been trying to hire some experienced help for deep sea diving. Diving? He has no equipment. Well, he must have a new outfit. They brought ashore three packing cases from that two master that anchored off the port this morning. We've got to stop this. If they get to the bottom of Haunted Harbor, they'll smash our whole project. Where'd they take the diving gear? Marsden's store. You must destroy it tonight. Those cases are empty. Turn on the lights, Yank. Just bait for our trap. I'll take that. You're going to tell the natives who killed their chief. Oh, no, he isn't. Drop those guns.
you're questioning when he comes to. What happened to the other one? He got away. In a car. The Mars is going to force Greg to tell the natives who planted that bomb. We've got to get him out of their hands. That's easy enough for you to say, but none of us can get anywhere near him. I can get near enough to give him a message. Yeah, but that... Marsden can't be fooled by any obvious trick. We've got to plan this carefully. Go to the native village and see the chief. Tell him that Marsden said... Come in peace. I have a message for your new chief, Tamil. What is your message? It is a warning. Captain Marsden, the man who destroyed your old chief, plans to seize you and force your people to work in the coconut plantation. Have you proof of this, Tuan? Captain Marsden will furnish a proof himself. He will send you a message saying he will bring you a prisoner who will confess to the killing of the old chief. I will be ready for him. But I do not wish him to come to our village. I will tell him to meet me on a crest trail. There's a tiger trap there. That's the idea. Need any help? No. My own people can avenge the death of our chief. Nala, Kula, Nayaka. You were a fool not to answer the skipper's questions. It was a chance to save your neck. Hello, Yank. Hello. What's this all about? Who's the prisoner? Well, we caught breaking in here last night. Probably one of Carter's gang. Jim thinks if we can make him talk, we can find out who killed the chief and square ourselves with the natives. Fat chance. Oh, a tough customer, huh? We'll take care of that, all right. Jim's down at the bungalow. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Kane? Yeah, I'll phone and ask if he can handle another shipment of gold. Jim? Yank talking. Kane's here. He wants to know if you can handle another shipment of gold for him. All right, I'll tell him. Yeah, he says it'll be okay. Thanks, I'll have the stuff ready. Try a little pressure on him. I think he'll talk. Maybe he's got the right idea at that. Wait, don't do that. I'll talk. Take me to Mars. Well, that's what we've been waiting for. If you don't know where Carter is and where I can find him, what good is your confession? I can square you with the natives. Take me to Tamil and I'll tell him who killed the old chief. I can't go to the village. He's cut my throat before I had a chance to explain. Well, then we can meet Tamil somewhere away from the village but you'll have to protect me and get me safely off the island. You'll have to risk it, Jim. I'll find a native to carry a message to Tamil. All right. You tell Tamil I'll meet wherever he says. Underman today, the most dangerous animal that stalks our jungles. All right, test it. Good. Now we must reset it quickly. Captain Marsden will be here soon. Where are you?
are the natives. The meeting place is farther on. Follow that trail. Hunter man today, the most dangerous animal that stalks our jungles. All right, test it. Good. Now we must reset it quickly. Captain Marsden will be here soon. places farther on. Follow that trail. Get up. I 
can. I hurt my ankle. Get up. You're finished, Marsden. The natives will never know we put the bomb on the radio and kill their chief. I heard that man admit the murder of our chief. I'm sorry that we accused you unjustly. Well, this sort of evens things up. If you would come to the village with me, I will explain that you are not responsible for our chief's death. Well, that's what I'd like, Cardew. Lead the way. And now that Marsden's in good with the natives again, he'll probably make a deal with their leaders. He won't have a chance. I'll take care of Marsden before the natives can help him. Well, how? I left word for him to pick up a shipment of gold here. But we can't touch him. Everyone will know he's been here. We don't have to kill him. Marsden will be entirely responsible for the gold once it's in his possession. If it should be stolen, his employer, Galbraith, would have to pay us the $100,000 of gold is worth. I get it. That'll really put Marsden in bed, and Galbraith will be through with him. Right. He'll have to leave Pulamati, and we'll have no more trouble with him. Marsden's here now. Get out of sight. Hello, Kane. Hello, Marsden. How are things going? Oh, not so good. I've got to get that Haunted Harbor situation cleared up before I get the natives to work the plantation. Well, at least you can still do business with me. Your gold shipment is ready. Good. Twelve bars this time, huh? That's right. Pretty good shipment. Oh, Patricia. What's going on here? Well, we're keeping Kane's gold under guard and we ship it this afternoon. But wouldn't it be wiser to keep it in a safe at the store? Oh, well, that's the first place anybody looked for it. Besides, you crack that safe open with a hammer and a chisel. Are you going to tell us where that gold is? No. We got to make him talk. Give him some more. Out cold. They'll have that gold ship before we find out where it is. I've got an idea. Hello? Are you going to tell us where the gold is? He's tricked us. The phone's open. We've got to get to the store. Tommy's in trouble. Yank, you stay here on guard. Lock the door. Turn that transmitter on. Set it to wavelength of our truck.
Who was it? It was Snell and one of his men. They tried to force me to tell where we were keeping the gold. I know. I heard them when you opened the telephone. But I didn't open the telephone. It must have been a trick. That's it. A trick to get us out of the bungalow so they could get the gold. So that's where it is. We've got to get back to the bungalow. You go ahead, Jim. I'll be all right. Wait here, Patricia. I'll see what's going on.
in that truck. that truck. the gold and put it on board the Bonita. It's on its way to the States by now. Well, at least it's still ours. We'll get the cash for it and for the rest of the gold we're going to ship. Don't be too sure of that. I learned from one of the crew that the Bonita brought some deep sea diving equipment to Marsden. Then he'll make another attempt to investigate Haunted Harbor. That's exactly what he's doing. He's put the equipment aboard his schooner and hired some men to handle it. We've got to prevent him from using this diving gear. You two go to the control station at Lookout Point. You know what to do when you get there. Yeah. This time we'll get Mars and his whole crew.
Martin's schooner is just entering the harbor. Each of these circles indicates the location of a mine, which is set off when we throw the knife switch with the corresponding number. The moving light indicates the position of the schooner. When it gets over one of those mines, we'll blast it to bits. Start your generator and stand by the switches. Make sure all those connections are tight. Right, Skipper. Patricia calling Captain Marsden. Patricia calling Captain Marsden. Come in, Patricia. Nothing to report. Any instructions? Cruise along the road overlooking the harbor. If you see anything suspicious, notify us at once. All right, Jim. The schooner's heading for mine three. Ready. Put her on the other tag. Hold it. He's changed his course. Heading for mine five. Port six points. Six points. Ah, he's veered off again. Send up the sea monster between mine six and seven. If he sails over to investigate it, we'll have him right where we want him. Circle off port bow. Head into it, we'll run it down. He's gone under. Keep going. It worked. He's headed right between mine six and seven. Get ready. Carter's men so far. I'd better report to Jim. You'll never get through that static. I don't think it's static. Sounds more like a generator to me. Now, what would a generator be doing out here? I don't know, but I intend to find out. Keep on driving ahead. If the sound gets louder, we'll know we're getting nearer its source. We can't take a chance going any further into the harbor till I find out what's down there. Help me into that diving suit. Give me your gun. The generator noise is at its peak right here. There's nothing between here and Haunted Harbor. Let's look up above. Marsden's in a diving outfit, getting ready to go down. Oh, can't we do something to stop him? Not until the schooner goes over another mine. Good luck, Skipper. I'll need it. We'll keep in touch by phone.
Yes, Skipper. Oh, the sea serpent's a phony, huh? Well, that's a relief. The sea serpent are mechanical devices, controlled from shore by wires. Yes, Skipper. The dolphin? Your own schooner. Aye, aye, sir. Right away. The captain's found the dolphin. There's a million dollars in gold bullion aboard her. He'll need a winch to clear the wreckage. Slack off on the anchor and the tidal drift is into position. Schooner's moving again. She's drifting towards mine eight. Get set. She's moving closer. Fifty feet more and goodbye, Captain Marsden. Get your hand away from that switch. Keep them covered while I get their guns.
the dolphin with a gold bullion aboard her lying down there on the bottom. That's why Carter's men wanted to keep everyone out of this harbor. They knew the wreck was here. But a ship doesn't get wrecked in a landlocked harbor. The dolphin was scuttled. Scuttled? Well, that means mutiny, piracy, murder. Yes, Carter's got a lot to answer to when we catch up with him. Those mines were detonated from a point on shore. You men launched the dinghy. We haven't heard from Tommy and Patricia for some time. Maybe they spotted something. Well, we'll try to contact them by radio before we go ashore. Jim Marsden calling Patricia Harding. Come in, Patricia. Well, that's funny, she doesn't answer. Well, they probably get out of the car to investigate something. We'll find out. They're launching the dinghy. That means they're coming ashore to investigate. Well, I'll take care of that if I can get on that beach in time. Go ahead. I'll contact the boss and have him send Meet and Ronson to repair the control board. Oh, 
inside, Yank. It's our only chance. Keep firing, Yank. I'm going ashore in the water. Got your covered, Snell. Marsden, get your hands way up high. Come on. Come on, Yank. I've got him. See anything? Not yet. and Yank are ashore. They've captured Snell. That's bad. Snell won't talk, and they're not headed this way. Suppose they find a station wagon this girl came in. I'll have to move it. And I'll be sure and leave it where they'll find it. Fix the car door to take care of Mars and when he opens it. I'll go on to headquarters from there. There's the car. Where's Tommy and Patricia? They probably went looking for trouble and found it. Go on, get moving. from them and got to the car first. He was blown up bits. I'll have to report this to the boss. Calling X2. Calling X2. Here's your gun, Yank. They sure did a good job of blowing it up. This man trap was set by Carter's men. That means they must have captured Patricia and Tommy. How will we find them? 
We'll have to backtrack the tire marks and find out where it was before it got here. And if they follow back on the tire tracks, it'll bring them pretty close to here. Much too close. Tell them to blow up the control station. You'll have to destroy the place. What about the girl? Leave her there. She knows too much. You heard the orders. Get busy. Pack up all the papers and documents. We'll take them to headquarters. That's how they operate their miner, their phony sea serpents. Sure, that's it. Look, Patricia and Tommy's tracks. Follow the wires. All set? Stay where you are. Jim! Get from behind that desk. Yank, keep him covered while I frisk him.
set. Stay where you are. Jim. Get from behind that desk. Yank, keep him covered while I frisk him. you prisoner. Could one of them have been Carter? Yes, it could have been Greg. He was in charge and gave all the orders. This is beginning to fit together. Carter murders Voorhees on a mower. And you were nearly hanged for that. And he came here and tried to keep everyone away from Haunted Harbor. Why? Because he knew that the dolphin with the gold aboard her was scuttled in the harbor. And that's why he planted mines and mechanical sea monsters there. Skipper, the harbor's safe now. Let's get back to our diving operations and salvage that gold. Wait, let's check on this clue first. I took these off one of the men just before the fight started. They're addressed to Bert Mead and Kara Kane's mine. Well, the man must have worked there. The postmark is six months old. Yes, I see that. But it's still a definite clue. Yank, you take the schooner back to Pulamati. Patricia and I have a little checking up to do on this fellow Mead at Kane's mine. By this time, Mars knows all about Haunted Harbor and that the dolphin is sunk there. But where does that get him? He doesn't know that I'm Carter. He doesn't know that we've finished salvaging the rest of the gold off the dolphin. And he doesn't know that I'm using this mine as a cover-up for remelting the gold. Yeah, but Mars is no fool. He'll begin to figure things out when he investigates the dolphin and finds the gold's missing. That'll take time. Meanwhile, we'll have the rest of the bullion remelted so it can't be identified. And that's your job. Now go ahead and rush things up. Hello, Greg. What's doing? Plenty. We gotta get the rest of this gold remelted today. Can't do it. Not unless you give me a lot of help. All right, I'll go to the bunkhouse and get you some of the men. Fill up your fire. Jim, that's Greg now. You wait here.
Keep him covered while I tie him. This man turns out to be Carter. Our job is done. Get going. Get in there. What's going on here? Kane? You know this man? Of course, he's Greg, my foreman. He might go by the name of Greg, but I have reasons to believe his name is Carter. Carter? That's right. The one who's behind this haunted harbor hoax. The man who murdered Voorhees. And I think he knows why the dolphin disappeared. He's going to tell us. Well, this is unbelievable. I've trusted this man implicitly. He had full charge here, hired the men to work the mine. But then he used his position to hire killers for his own purposes. These are serious charges, Captain Marsden. I'm prepared to back them up. Do you know anything about Bert Mead? Mead? I think he worked here. If I remember right, we hired a beachcomber by that name, but he was fired for being drunk. Perhaps the men in the bunkhouse could tell you more about him. Maybe we better get down to the bunkhouse and check up on that. All right. You keep your eye on my prisoner? Certainly. Stalling and untie me. I had to wait until they were out of sight. Marsden won't learn anything from the men. He knows too much already, especially about you. But the gold's safe and you're in the clear. And I intend to stay that way. You're of no more use here, Greg. I know that. I'll clear off the island. We'll join up later but I'll need some cash. You've overlooked one important fact. Marsden thinks you're Carter. He'll only call the whole case closed when Carter is dead. You can't do that, Kane. I'm your partner. I've risked my neck for you. You're risking mine just by being alive. That was a shot. Yes, it came from the mine office. loose and came at me with a chair. I had to shoot in self-defense. That's too bad. Carter's confession would have cleared me of Orhe's murder. I'll be glad to substantiate all the facts for you, Captain. Thanks. Right now, we gotta get a full report to Galbraith so he can lay the matter before the authorities on Amoa. Can I use your car? Help yourself. It's outside. Thanks. Take the wheel, Patricia. When we get around the next bend, I'm going to jump out. Why? What for? There's something wrong somewhere. The way I tied Greg, he couldn't possibly have gotten loose. This calls for a little checking up on Mr. Kane. got to speed up here and clear out. Marsden captured Greg. He did? Is he wise to our setup here? No, Greg is dead and Marsden thinks he was Carter. Then you've nothing to worry about. I know, but I'll only feel 100% safe when the rest of this stuff is remelted so it can't be identified as a dolphin gold. Hold it. Marsden. Mr. Carter.
Gentlemen, I have been authorized to announce that the entire gold cargo on the sunken schooner Dolphin has been recovered. And every debt of Captain James Marsden has been paid off in full, and he's once again master of the schooner Wahari. I knew you'd do it, Jim. Thank you, Captain. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you. Right over here, Pat. Nice going, son. How did it go, Jim? Well, the case is closed. The authorities tell me they have the rest of Carter's men behind bars. Well, it was tough sailing, but you cleared your name and restored your fortune. And I couldn't have done it without your help, Mr. Goldraith. Oh, none, sir. Or without Yanks. Ah. That goes double for Patricia. I'm just so happy for your sake, Jim. Skipper, I thought we ought to celebrate. So I ordered a special dinner. It's ready to be served in the booth. That's good for me. Let's go. Jim don't need any help now. <laughs>